State your name for us. My name, Robert Benning. Robert Benning, okay. And can you tell us about your item? Well, I have two items. Um, they kind of relate to each other somewhat. Uh, the main item here is the, um, the Milton, Pennsylvania uh, 1909 souvenir of the Sons of the Veterans of the uh, Union uh, Military Encampment in Old Homely. And essentially what happened was uh, the Sons of the Veterans of the Union War uh, Soldiers formed an organization, um, I think it was formed in early 1878, but then there were local organizations throughout the state of the country. And um, they had a, what they called an encampment, which was kind of a get-together convention, if you want to call it, at different places throughout the country and the state. And this happened to be one they had in Milton. And so when they organized this, they did a, um, a, a sort of a, a photo compilation and a history, et cetera, of various industries, co uh, commercial properties throughout the borough of Milton. And um, I assume that when you were in this, you paid to get yourself into it. In other words, it's sort of an advertising type of thing because it has uh, pictures of the different industries in the town. Uh, there were quite a few back in those days, or 1909. And then the various businesses. There's the Milton Hotel, which is one of the finest hotels in the state at that point. And um, the radio, the, the uh, rail stations, all of those. And then, um, there, actually, there was even a, there was a park north of Milton and a trolley that serviced it. And then there was the fire of 1880, which is a big event. And there's some pictures of that. And then it goes through the churches, the businesses, the schools, and different homes in the borough. Um, and it's a sort of nice compilation. And then there are pictures of the borough council, the board of trade, different organizations, also included towards the end of it. So it's kind of an interesting um, survey of what mill looked like in 1909 from an industrial standpoint, commercial standpoint, and a residential standpoint as well as the organizations. Even though originally it was, it was for the central descent of the uh, Civil War veterans, but um, it's a nice uh, sort of summary at that point in time. And I think it really shows uh, in at least the turn of the century, 1900s up to probably into the 70s and 80s, that Milton was a very um, vibrant community, had a great industrial base, a great commercial base, and a great thriving population. Now, are you from Milton? Yes. I went to Milton High School, born here, and um, uh, went to Colgate University, undergrad, University of Pennsylvania Law School, and moved back after law school, and I've uh, practiced law here since 1973. Wow. I'm also a borough solicitor, um, and my office is located on Broadway, just about three blocks down the street. It's a big Victorian house, which is actually shown in this book. So um, that's a big history. <laughs> Definitely. Can you tell us about your other yeah. item? The other item is something that I've got to have around. I bought it back in 1974 <clears throat> when I first moved back and started practicing law. Some woman I uh, was in an estate, and I just happened to like the box. It was very colorful. And it, it's uh, basically a um, <clears throat> back in those days, which is around the same time that we would have here, 1909, uh, when you uh, when a merchant got in something, it came in a box by train normally, of course, particularly if it's pepper, because it had to come from across the ocean to be able to get here. So we shifted a box like this, and he would um, the box would be designed so that he would display to the public. This would be facing out there. On the back, it also has the name of the merchant as well. So when you came into the store, you would open the lid and would scoop out your pepper and put it into whatever container you had. Um, most of them don't survive because, of course, they were thrown away or trashed. But this one happened to uh, survive, and uh, this had a very uh, lovely picture in the front, and um, sort of reminiscent of what life used to be back like back in those days. And right there at a store, which I think was on Elm Street. It was a grocery store. There were, and there were on Elm and downtown, there were a lot of different little stores you can see in the book um, where um, you know they sold grocery, they sold whatever there was. So you just picked this up then? You just mm -hmm. kind of found it? I found it at Salem, you know, so uh, it was just one of those things that um, I sort of hung on to over the years because it was kind of, I thought it was neat, kind of attractive. And how did you come across the book? The books, and um, actually my parents, who also lived just outside of Milton, were, um, as they retired from teaching and stock business, they, they um, got into antiques and uh, they would pick up items that said they had an antique shop out on Broadway at that time. And they happened to buy this and a couple other ones. There's one of 1905, which is earlier, um, another in Cameron, 
not quite as nice. This one is in better shape. But, um, so I got it through them. Awesome. There, so, are, there are several of these. There are more of these around, but they're not real common. No, that's that's awesome. So for folks unfamiliar with Milton and, Miss, and Milton's history, what mm -hmm. do your items, like what can your items tell us about the town? Well, I think as they said, um, they reflect, uh, particularly of course the book, because it's more extensive, it reflects uh, at least as of around the turn of the 1900s, etc., which did exist before that, but after the Industrial Revolution and after the um, um, Civil War, uh, Milton grew substantially, particularly from a, a manufacturing standpoint. It originally started from a, a basically a grist mill here, that's why it's called Milton. But um, as time went on, the, uh, of course the canal went through and then went to the railroad, and it became a, a, an industrial center. Steel production, um, clothing, um, pretty much anything you can imagine they produced here. ACF Industries, which is picked in here, of course, was the oldest um, railroad car industry in the country. It still exists today, although it's been back and forth, but um, that, that's depicted in here. Um, there are steel companies, uh, just all kind of manufacturing. And as a result of that, the people moved here were employed. And of course, then your commercial section grew because there was a, a hub of people living here. Plus, you're at a railroad. Back in those days, you could came by railroad. So if you're at a railroad stop, then of course, goods would come off there and people would go into those towns to shop for um, whatever the products were there. And there was a great variety of um, stores that sold many different things. So that's sort of, you know, where, how things arose. And I think this book particularly uh, depicts a period of time when it was a very booming community. Awesome. Do you have any final thoughts or anything that you'd like to add before we finish up filming? Um, no, I guess uh, <clears throat> one thing I would I think of, and it sort of reflects this, when I was uh, a child grew up here in the 50s, uh, into the 60s, um, the... Uh, the commercial uh, part of the town was particularly, um, I guess, fun and interesting because I can remember that at Christmas time, um, the week before Christmas, I'd go downtown with my parents, and you could hardly walk in the sidewalks. You know, the people they were that crowded. There were just all these stores, and people would shop downtown, and um, you know, it was just an enjoyable experience because there was just so much activity and such a great variety of stores. There was Newberry's Grants, you know, under toy stores, there was a department store. That, you know, for a kid, it was really fun. And um, of course, as time went on, um, those things all changed. The industries eventually, um, we have two left, Boyardi's and AC, yeah, pretty much, the big industries. And um, commercially, of course, after the Agnes flood, it really devastated things. And uh, commercially, the town never came back. Um, just one of those facts of history. Of course, many of your other industrial towns in the along the river here have had the same problem because the malls occurred and uh, things changed from a, from a commercial standpoint. But for my childhood, it was a, just a wonderful experience.